On Thursday, January 27th, former NHL star Evander Kane signed a one-year deal with the Edmonton Oilers. Prior to signing the veteran forward, the Oilers found themselves falling short of preseason expectations. As of the 27th, the team was at 20 wins, 16 losses, and 2 overtime losses. Now, that record is not terrible, but with the expectations and talent pool, the Oilers needed to climb back up to the top of the West. Now, for a bit of a summary, and for those who don't know, let's take a quick look at the roller coaster that has been the recent life of Evander Kane. The controversies date back to July of 2016, where Kane found himself being sued for assault causing injuries and even surgery. The story goes that there are two separate incidents of Kane's violence at bars, but luckily for the then young player, the case was later adjourned and dismissed. Three years later, in November of 2019, Evander Kane was sued once more this time by the Cosmopolitan Casino in Las Vegas. Kane had allegedly taken out $500,000 in gambling markers, but had walked out of the casino without making arrangements to settle his large debt. Now on the topic of gambling, Anne Kane, his former wife, publicly accused Kane of betting on his own NHL games and even throwing games for more winnings. Now despite her claims, the NHL found no evidence for these allegations. Money issues were a pretty recurring theme in Kane's life, as on January 11, 2021, Kane filed for bankruptcy in the state of California after amassing a total of $26.8 million in debt. In September of 2021, the couple was divorced and with that, Anne Kane applied for a domestic violence restraining order from the accusations of sexual assault and domestic battery. However, it was actually Vander Kane who had received the restraining order from his claims of physical abuse. Once more, the NHL cleared Kane of these accusations as they did not have sufficient evidence. His most recent issue was a violation of the league's protocols in which Kane submitted a fake vaccination card and received a suspension from the league. For the San Jose Sharks, this was the last straw as they placed Kane on waivers and shipped him off to the San Jose Barracuda of the AHL. Now, personal issues aside, Kane is one hell of an NHL player. Starting with the 2018 to 2019 season, in 75 games of the Sharks, Kane tallied 30 goals and 26 assists. In the 2019-2020 season, Kane tallied 26 goals and 21 assists in 64 games. Last season, Kane scored 22 goals and dished 27 in 56 games, making himself a near point per game player. And still being 30 years old, this version of Vando Kane is still alive and the Oilers are hoping that this is the type of player that they have signed. In his first game with the Oilers, Kane scored his first goal with his new club on three shots and a rating of plus two. Not bad for a debut game. For now, he finds himself on the first line alongside Connor McDavid and Kyler Yamamoto. If he can't find scoring chances alongside McDavid, then we have some big issues. Although, Kane could easily move around the lineups and even see a spot alongside another Oilers superstar, Leon Dreisaitl. As for power play, Kane has never been a huge producer and currently finds himself on the second line power play. He might be able to take the role away from Pooley Yarvey, but I think staying in line 2 and not clashing with that chemistry is probably the safest bet. With so many offensive options, Kane will likely fall short of his numbers from the last few seasons. Now let's get into the real question, will Kane actually have a significant impact with the Oilers? Despite the circus that may come with him, Evander Kane is a talented player and should find easy offense with the help of some excellent Oilers teammates. Remember that, with all the drama he's gone through, Kane is looking to block that all out, so expect him to be on his best behavior at all times. His signing reminds me a bit of Boudreaux joining the Canucks. Sure, he made his own changes, but the team was really the same as before, but it was the boost in Mojo that allowed the Canucks to go on a great run and turn their season around. I'm sure the Oilers are looking for that same spark from Evander Kane, providing quality offense and helping put some W's in the win column for a struggling Oilers team. And there you have it. So I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Obviously, it's a lot different from anything you guys have seen in this channel. First time you've actually heard my voice as well. All you guys know on here is highlights. I'm going to continue to posting highlights. Maybe not all highlights, only kind of the, the big important moments, not so much of the smaller stuff. And slowly start bringing in these kind of story videos and other videos, commentary, stuff like that. So if you have any more video ideas, drop in the comments. Let me know how you thought this one was. Of course, I know there's going to be stuff to change, so please give me some criticism, and I'd love to hear it. So I'll see you guys in the next one.